The Big Show with Night and Day. Get a hell of a caffeine fix from your local Night and Day. Don't fight it. It's time to go up a size. This is the biggest... The biggest... The biggest... This is the biggest... Our biggest show. The Hodaki Big Show. With Jason Hoyt, Mike Minogue and Keezy. Oh, g'day, you mad bastards. Great to have your company this Monday afternoon. It is the 15th of April, 2024. And you, my friends, are listening to The Big Show. Brought to you by night and day. So good, fellas. So good, Mogi. Looking hot as always, my friend. And that's one very cool T-shirt, brother. <laughs> I appreciate that, you sick dog. Oh, you sick dog. You mad son of a bee. Um, glad to be here on a Monday, brother. Isn't it good to be back? So good, man. Although it feels like we've um, we've already done this because we, we've seen each other all day today. We've been doing a little bit of filming, haven't we? Yeah, we have been, Mogi, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which was great. Yeah, well, I, I don't know how you guys are. Usually by Saturday afternoon, I'm getting a little bit angsty to get back to the show. You know what I mean? Did you just stand on your tiptoes then to have a geese out the window? No, or what? no, I just got a bit of a cramp on my foot. <laughs> is that what that was? Yeah, yeah keezy, you mad bastard. How's life? <laughs> Jason's cramp face is very similar to his perv face. <laughs> uh, <laughs> life's good, fellas. Great weekend. Beautiful day here in Auckland. Isn't good it to lovely? Be back with the fellas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's ramp the energy up. What's cranking? <laughs> What's cranking today? I tell you what, there's a lot going on. Yeah. There's wage against the machine. I've got a bit of an issue having driven behind uh, Keezy uh, this morning with some of his driving techniques. Yeah. I was absolutely appalled and shocked. And yeah. I believe, Mogi, uh, you did a bit of op shopping over the weekend. Yeah, I did, man. It's pretty pretty cool out there. It's a whole new world for old Mogi. And of course, uh, as always on a Monday afternoon, a bit of a sports wrap. Uh, what are the warriors up to, etc., etc., etc. Text us 3483 or send us a talk back on the iHeartRadio app. Or feel free to give us a call on 0800 Hodaki. Where are you listening to the show, New Zealand? What are you wearing? Let's kick off with a bit of blur. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Bon Jovi there on the uh, radio Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. The time is exactly 13 minutes past four o'clock. I had a tremendous Weekend, fellas. Good on you, mate. It's been a while, I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Um, my wife and I mm. had a stay. My wife and I? No, it's just my wife, Keezy. Oh, yeah, yeah. Had a staycation, Mogi. Oh. Well, we uh, <laughs> booked a hotel room. Oh, did you really? Yes. And uh, had dinner. Had oh. a Had a restaurant there. and uh, What kind of dinner? It was a, um, a it was a place called Ghost Street, oh. which does sort of Asian-y type food. Very good. Highly Pugsan. recommended. The Pugs I recommend it. Five stars from Hoodie J. Now, we've been there before and we really liked it. And it's a really nice ambiance uh, and so forth. But anyway, and then we were going to a movie after that. And, you know, we were walking to the restaurant from the hotel um, and I, we've got this running gag, my wife and I. Oh, yeah. And I said, She always uh, gives you a wedgie, eh? <laughs> yeah. And, and hangs me up on a peg. That <laughs> is funny. With the old undies going right, She's funny, in, man. right in the nuss. Um, and anyway, we're walking along the street there towards the restaurant. And I said, I'll tell you what, darling, you know what we should do? After the, um, after the film tonight, we should do a bit of clubbing. Get into a bit of clubbing. Yeah, that'd be cool. Um, and she said, oh, yeah, we could, except you're wearing dad shoes. Mm. Oh. And, and I I was sho- so shocked genuinely that I stopped on the street and I said, excuse me? Oh. A- and then I went, but in my heart of hearts, I was going, oh, she's just joking and yeah, having yeah, jokes, yeah, you know, because we were sort of jokes and stuff. And then, but then she went on the mega defensive and was like, "Oh no, I didn't. I, I didn't mean it like that. Really? I, no, I don't mean that you you're a dad and that you're wearing dad. No, I didn't mean that. You know, blah blah yeah. blah blah blah. Which just made it worse for me. And I went, how how dare you? Yeah, got in a hoor of a mood. I got in a hoor of the a hoor of a mood. Were you still on the hook at this point from the wedgie? Yeah, I was still dangling on the wedgie. No, I wasn't at that point. But right. I was outraged, fellas. What? I mean, have you ever seen me wear dad shoes? Well, what shoes were you wearing? Which ones? Oh, they were grey with zip ups, with zips oh. on the side. <laughs> right, and were you wearing them? This is how you can establish uh, whether they're cool or dad shoes. Were you wearing them for comfort? Yes, 
Yeah, they're, they're 100% dad shoes. Then. Well, they've well, got the other clothes have got zips on them. Yeah, well, oh, yeah, but they're, yeah. they're good, though, because they've got zips on both sides. So they're kind of styly in a kind of beigey grey colour. Yeah. Because uh, I was wearing lime green pants, and they just sort of work really well with them. Yeah. And an orange belt buckle. Well, right. I mean, you could you could complain about the fact that she's, you know, she said to you, hey, you're wearing dad shoes. Yes. But on the other side of it, you could try and look at it as glass half full because you didn't say... You dress, you know, you you got dad pants on and dad belt and dad shirt, which from the sounds of it, you had all that going on as well. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. So you're saying I should just take that, that she only did mention the shoes, the not one like thing. the rest of my she outfit. She bag you for the rest of it, uh, which sounds it like sounds like she would have been within her rights to do. Right. Yeah. yeah. It kind of sounds like you're dressed like a rodeo clown or something with all the yeah, different yeah, colours you're you? rocking. Well, I mean, I suppose looking back, it was a bit rodeo clownish, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, right. But I just, I was shocked right. that she would. Well, I tell you about, do you have a photo of them? Because we could put them on the Insta. And see. And get pugs to chuck a photo up That's and people can vote. Great idea, Keezy, because uh, I think they're incredibly stylish. Okay, let's do that. You can vote um, Pudaki Big Show on the story there. And as I say, super comfortable because we were walking around the city at, like, at night and that. And so when you When you say night, what time was it? It was about 6.30. <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Smashing pumpkins there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon, 26 minutes past four o'clock. Great to have your company, by the way, if you're just joining us and hope you survived your weekend. Speaking of weekends, Jase, I... um, over the weekend, just been there, I uh, went out, I've spent all day Saturday with my daughter there. Um, the wife had not a day off, I wouldn't call it that, but she had certainly had a day to herself there and there. Um, I went out to, uh, to the op shop, so I oh, gathered, cool. up, gathered up all the stuff in the house, all the things that you end up in your wardrobe and you're just not wearing it anymore. So I put boxed it up and then uh, took it down there. And then I thought, oh, I have a little shop, and this isn't how I normally run. I don't really like um, wearing um, – I always sort of sort of dirty old clothes. Yeah, dead man's chucked clothes. Them. Yeah, dead man's clothes. That's right. But I started having a geese through there and uh, all the T-shirts and stuff. This one for six bucks, another one there for three bucks. Yeah, man. This, that, that. Bloody amazing, man. Yeah. And I think it's a, it's the way to go because rather than sort of buying all this new these new clothes, why not let's get into the recycling and the reusing of things Absolutely, and repurposing man. of things that aren't actually old and garbage. It's just some people get sick of the side of them or maybe they don't fit Keezy. You yeah, know what or, I mean? Or like they might go out of fashion or something, but sure. the, the product itself is still good. It's still good product, isn't yeah. it, mate? Yeah, no, they had all sorts of good stuff down there. I, I know exactly. I mean, I love I love a good oppie. Yeah, we can uh, tell. Yeah. And, and I'm one of those guys, I guess you could say that's really fortunate in the sense that I can wear anything and make it work. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So it might be from the 1970s, but somehow on Hoodie J it works. Yes. Yeah. And you're right. I mean, you can come away with like t-shirts, bloody jeans, pants, shoes, for, you know, heaps of stuff, yeah. and you shell out like thirty bucks. Yeah, like weird hoodies, uh, sailboat shirts, dirty hats, all these sorts of things. I never, weirdly enough, Dad these, shoes. I never get my, I never get my hats from up shops. Uh, there was like heaps of other cool things there as well. My daughter found a couple of toys in there. Yeah, nice. Um, some books. Um, there was a bar of soap there that was made up of other bars of soap. Oh, you know when yeah, it gets yeah. down real yeah, thin nice. and then you join them all up. Ooh, was that uh, there? Yeah. There, so th- that was um, 50 cents. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. A soap battle it. last me for years. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I, just... I hardly ever use soap. Can I don't I? know if you guys ever use the old foot pumice. You oh, know, yeah. The pum- Man, I went in there one day and got like eight clumps of pumice. They had that, a bucket of it down yeah, there. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was like eight or nine clumps of pumice that have, you know people have just chucked out from their showers and stuff. Ten cents, Mogi. It's unbelievable. How many did you buy? Because you bought all of them. No, I just bought like eight or nine. You don't need that many keys. You don't even need nine pumice clumps. Yeah. They had down the back there. Um, they had like this little um, sort of shelving unit with all sort of, I guess, knickknacks is what you call them. Sure. And they had um, twenty um, toothbrush tied together with a um, with a hair tie. A dollar. A you, dollar. You yeah, tell yeah, me you didn't yeah. buy that. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you need twenty used toothbrushes? Well, because. Sometimes you lose them, sometimes you go away. Sometimes people come and stay at your house and they've forgotten their toothbrush, they can use one right. of those toothbrushes. Funnily enough, sim- similar sign, uh, kind of scenario, Mogi, uh, just on a slightly bigger scale, I got a bundle of toilet brushes that oh, had yeah. all been you know, el- elasticated together and yeah. I actually ended up putting that on a, on a pole and cleaning the house with it. 
See, that's with used to yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, to be honest yeah. there are good stuff there like I went there I think last year it was down in Christchurch and I found like a really cool old starters style sports jacket thing like real retro 90s vibes oh, yeah. and that was like 10 bucks yeah if you've got um, loser sort of dress up parties to go to then yeah, that's yeah. handy as well I and guess actually, I'll yeah, be honest no with, toothbrushes I'll sorry. be honest I'll be honest with you Keezy I find that because you like to buy your cut jeans from Helen Steins and your I brand new t-shirts and stuff that, yeah. uh, and your three quarter pant yeah. um, that kind Kind of thing. I don't see you as an op shopper. You wouldn't suit you. Well, yeah, there's heaps right. of there's heaps of pants down there that got holes in them. Yeah, so right. you should be all right. Well, Pakistan too. And Studio B loves it. Oppie Mogi. Mm, mm, mm. mm. What was your um, What was your favourite thing you bought then? <sighs> it's hard to nail it down, but I'd say um, there was a box of a thousand rubber joeys there, barely used. The Hodaki Big Show podcast. Do what they told you. What they told you. Do what they told you. Do what they told you. It's time to wage against the machine. Winning in the game of... Yes, indeed. There's one thing we love on the big show, and that's giving away cash, cash, cash. This is how it goes. Uh, we name an hourly wage, i.e. $69. You hold on for as many hours as you can until you say stop to beat the machine, eh, fellas? Yeah, but if you take too long, Jace, the machine could fire your ass. Absolutely, and you lose it all, Moogie. Oh, God. It's a lot of uh, pressure because you don't want to go too early because it might go forever, but you don't want to hold on too long because it might stop early and you get nothing. You see yes. what I'm saying? Yeah, it's You're real, right. Oh. It's a real conundrum. It's a tightrope. Can I put it like that? You can. Max, you mad bastard. How's life? I'm good, guys. Yourself? Yeah, good, thanks, good Max. Thanks, Max. What do you do for a crust, Max? I'm a parts warehouse manager. Yeah, good stuff, mate. Good stuff. Now, I've got to tell you, my friend, the wage today is $69 is an it? hour. Yeah. Again. Whoa. Crazy. Eh? Heaps of money, man. Pretty nice total, Max. Do you it's kn- absolutely beautiful. It yeah. is. Yeah, you know how the game works, eh? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good okay, stuff. Then we'll leave it there. All right, Max, we're going to load up the machine. Are you ready to go, my friend? Yes, way we go. Let's right. do it. And just remember, nice loud stop. Welcome to the machine. <laughs> One hour. Two hours. Three hours. Four hours. Stop. Oh. Oh. Cha-ching. Two hundred and seventy-six bucks. Sweet, that's a nice little uh, dollop of money for you there, Max. Oh, absolutely, guys. Thank you very much. No worries. Let's see where it would have ended. Oh, shall nice we? idea. That's yeah. a great idea. Jace. Would have ended. Five hours. Six hours. Seven hours. Eight hours. Wow. Ooh. Hey. Ooh. Five fifty two available to you there. Yeah, yeah. Still, still, Max, bit of money in the hand, eh? Yeah, I could have gone, probably gone, maybe about six hours, but I thought four was going to be safe. Oh, and, yeah. and you were yeah, right; it was cool. safe, man. You've done the right thing. Yeah, I think on Friday we had three hours. It was three hours for sixty nine yeah, bucks on Friday. Yeah. On Friday, yeah. you remember that? Yeah, man. Crazy, I was, Crazy. Filth, I was filthy. Hey, about good that dollop too. of cash, though, eh, fellas? Hey, hey, it's a nice little a dollop, dollop of, oh, cash. Shit. of cash because that's how cash comes in a dollop. I tell you what, Keezy. <laughs> You are cruising for a bruising, my friend. Hey, uh, good on you, Max. Stay on the line. And our good mate, Pugsan, in Studio oh, B, will take pugs. care of you. Bloody ripper. Uh, by the way, that's all thanks to our mates at Super Liquor. Cheers to that. Oh, I reckon. And it'll be back again tomorrow morning at 8.30 and, of course, on The Big Show. Hey, uh, just speaking of dollops of cash there, Keezy, how's your fun account going? Is that <laughs> is that is that going well? Yeah, it's going really good. My dollop have you been is having smaller. lots of fun, yeah. man? Yeah, yeah, lots of fun with my fun. People that don't know, I have a fun account for this part of this budgeting scheme my wife's got me on. Um, small dollop. My wife. Yeah. Just a little percentage each week of your wage there, Keezy. Yeah. Good stuff, mate. <laughs> Here's a bit of Alien Ant Farm. Oh, a dollop of music now for you. <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Hello, Sailor there on the Radio Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. The time is exactly 4.48 now. A lot of sporting action going on over the weekend, but we're doing uh, Warriors chat after five o'clock with Charlie Gubb. So let's get into a bit of sport chat with all the other sports, eh? 
Golf Chat with Double Bogey Mogi. Four! What a weekend it's been. The Masters, of course, taking place. So good, man. Um, so good. Over there in America. Um, and it's, I've was the whole weekend I was sat on the couch just absolutely glued to it. Same, man. Same. Yeah. Even on my staycation, I was watching it. How have you found it? I loved it, man. It's really yeah, good. I don't want to hear it? There's, him some, talk there's about something it. about the drama of, of a Masters. That's you right. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's right. And having um, Craig Stifler leading it from start to finish, today is out to a, um, 11 under. He has led from day one. Um, and all the way through, so it's going to be tough to beat. I think you know the uh, the weather's really settled down. And, um, tomorrow, of course, is the final day. What did you? The final day. All right. So you excited about that? I thought today was the t- t- no, nah, no. Nah, t- today to was nah, the, they've had to go oh, again. Isn't it Scotty yeah. Scheffler? Oh, yeah, Schiffler. that's what I said. No, you said Stiffler. Oh, no, no. Yeah, that's what they call him. Big yeah, they call him Big Stiff. Oh yeah. right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I take double because he's got a, he's got a really firm shaft. Yeah, yeah. It is. Super firm, so they call him uh, Mr. Stiff. Yeah, or, and he or is big stiffy, and he's a real swinger as well. So, yeah, um, but you're right, Mogi. Of course, finishing up tomorrow, you're saying, yeah, yeah if and, not, and he's had a not, four, four, four shot lead. I see the front, Mogi. If not Wednesday, uh, oh, they right. think it might blow out to well, Wednesday. Hang on, isn't it just four days usually? Well, Stiffler hasn't seen, um, he hasn't seen uh, Dune, and he's pretty keen to get along to that. Well, Dune one or two. Two. I think either of them. That's the thing. His wife wants to go to it. His wife. But he hasn't seen one. Right. So, yeah. So, anyway, yeah. There it could go. drag out. I'll tell you what, uh, man. Another. We'll keep you updated. Um, another news, USC 300. You fell with watch that. Oh. <laughs> Did I? Far out, yeah. Whew. Probably one of the uh, the greatest fights of all time. It'll go down as in history for the BMF title. Um, Max Holloway against Justin Gaethje. Um Holloway had an interesting time there. He poked Gaethje in the eye, one uh, finger in each eye in the first round. Uh, might have given him a kick. Oh, no, broke his nose, actually. Broke his nose almost clean off his face. It wow. was really good. So he was not having a good time of it. Holloway then proceeded to pretty much dismantle him for the rest of the fight. Great fight. So this guy, Max Holloway, is leading with 10 seconds to go. He walks to the middle of the ring. He points to the middle of the ring and just says, let's go. And they both just start absolutely throwing haymakers at each other. Hammer and tongs. Hammer and tongs. And then with one second to go, Max Holloway lands a punch, knocks the other guy completely out. One of the most dramatic fights ever. Maybe that's huge, how they sh- maybe huge that's card the, of fighting. Uh, maybe that's how they should do every fight. They just stand in the middle and just go toe to toe. Well, that's for a what minute. you and I have been saying for years. <laughs> do they need smaller rings? Just, just in terms of the UFC, can you do the poke in the eye? Can you do the no hopawati? poking in the eye? What about the hopawati? No, oh, you can do the hopawati. Oh, that's sure. okay. Yeah, cool. Yeah, uh, but no, not in the eye. Well, not in that eye. That eye. Because yeah. if they just had like a really tiny ring, yeah. Like, well, they've got they actually do it in um, Russia. In a phone box, the old school wow. phone boxes. Yeah, yeah. So you get in there and it's all on. Head, butt, knees. Yeah, right. You can take the phone off the hook and deduce each other in with it. Because, yeah, I mean, like, it, almost you can't move. It's just two guys, one Making tiny love. ring, and they are just going hell for leather. You yeah, know? hooking that, into I'd each be other. more keen for that. Just a reminder, by the way, after five o'clock, Charlie Gubb on Warriors chat. Yes. What a game that was, fellas. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, boy, oh, boy. Yeah. In the meantime, he's um, Queen to the Stone Age. Oh. And also, uh, I just want to say about the uh, rugby there, Super Rugby, the Hurricanes pumped the Chiefs, man. Absolutely pumped them. Eventually, yes. So good. Did you enjoy that one, Keezy? Yeah. Thanks, okay, mate. mate. No, I didn't, I didn't watch it. <laughs> oh, I was watching the Rugby League. Sorry, Fjellas. Fjellas? What was the result of that one? Huh? The oh, rugby. draw. <laughs> <laughs> Sick. <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Queens of the Stone Age there on the radio, Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. Now listen, coming up after five o'clock, we speak uh, to Charlie Gubb, re the Warriors, and what an interesting match that was. Also, speaking of Buck uh, your chance to in the draw for the Magic Round in Brizzy, fellas. That's right. Uh, joining, coming up pretty damn soon. Joining the four of us over in Brizzy, everything paid for, uh, flights, accommodation, and also tickets to all eight games at Suncorp Stadium. Good stuff. All that after five. Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Welcome back, you massive backbones. You're listening to The Big Show, brought to you by night and day. Hello. So good. 
Have you guys heard about the um, the caffeine fix you can get from night and day? Huh? $4.50. Barista made coffee, pretty damn good. Have they got baristas that work yeah, in yeah, there? Barista, really? Yeah, baristas? Yeah, baristas. Yeah, totally, man. It's a quality, it's quality place. They're also doing a Mogi wow. special at the moment. Oh, is that right? Yeah, so uh, twelve ninety nine. Yes. Uh, tofu flavored thick shake. Oh yes. Um, That's good eating. Pack of mini donuts. Yeah. And a large pack of incontinence pants. Yeah. And some anti dandruff shampoo. Twelve ninety nine. Wow, crazy. That is, that is a That's good, good eating. That all is around. a great deal. So yeah. you go in there and you say, "I want the Mogi special, please." And then yeah. they'll yeah. Twelve ninety nine. That's good. That's good. Hey. I might go and get that. Yeah, you should. Coming up. Uh, by the way, we're going to be speaking to uh, Charlie Gupp, Read the Warriors. Also, your chance to get in the draw for the uh, dri- uh, Brizzy trip. <laughs> Um, and also, we were filming today the big show uh, earlier in the morning, and I yeah. uh, followed Keezy back into town afterwards. And I've got a few issues with his driving look that I'd like to go over next, if that's all right, Mogi. Okay. Just appallingly bad. Can here. we do that off here? Like, doesn't um, need to be on air. Oh, I know my cars. I'm Mr. Driver Driver. <laughs> um, I'm Mr. Just, driver Driver. Just an abomination of. I was worried for my safety, put it that yeah. way. Is she up? The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. David Bowie there on the radio, uh, Hodaki Big Show this Monday afternoon. Now, uh, as previously mentioned, uh, the Big Show team filming this morning. Uh, way out in the WAPs, weren't we, fellas? Yep. Uh, I was having a few anxiety attacks driving out to the location because I wasn't trusting the Google Maps. You're a sensitive soul. I am a sensitive soul, and I just uh, – usually I trust my instincts, but, you know, sometimes I feel like Google Maps oh. is just putting me wrong. I think the last thing that you should trust is your instincts. Yes, definitely. Generally, I just tend to go off my instincts. But anyway, we filmed, <laughs> I don't even know you had instincts. We, we, we filmed the video, uh, which was great. Um <laughs> And as I say, ironically, it was a driving video, and I had to drive back. We all had our separate cars, which wasn't very environmentally conscious, uh, conscious may I add. And I was directly behind Keezy Mogi. Right up his now, a-hole. I was, I was deep inside. and no, no, you weren't. You, I don't know if you recall about maybe a few days ago, old <laughs> Keezy was by, directly behind me coming home. And, you know, had a real go at my driving. Sure. Now, what I'm about to tell you that I witnessed is dri- the, yeah. driving directly behind him is the truth. Hand on heart, really? Hand on heart. First offence, failure to indicate. Oh, you're joking. When? Big right-hand turn onto the main road, no indication whatsoever. Was that the one with the Not- truck stopped for me? Keezy, yes. can you just Ke- let him Ke- get everything Keezy. out of here, please? Okay. I was shocked because it was a dangerous part of the road. A very dangerous then we're driving, and there's, there was a couple of lane change options. On two occasions, zing across the lane, no indication. Zing oh, across the God. lane, no indication. You could take Appallingly someone's eye out with that. bad. Yeah. Appallingly bad. Secondly, excessive speed in limited speed zones. So, for example, what I mean by that Can you is explain that? 100k on the open road. Douche, we get to some roadworks. 60k, please. At this point, I'm directly behind Keezy. We hit the 60k. Keezy, boom, gunned it. Gunned it. I gunned it. He just took off in the distance. Yeah. I obeyed the law, Mogi, and went 60k. Sure. Then it was 30k. It dropped down to 30k because of roadworks. Keezy, dig, dig. <laughs> That's Just not how my car sounds, by the way. Uh, dust. I'm not lying. He got even quicker in the 30K <laughs> zone than so he yeah. was. On the, and I was like, <clears throat> un, this is unbelievable. This I should have taken a video, except, of course, I was driving. That would have been, wouldn't have been safe. Third one, and this is what really disgusted me, self-pleasuring while um, <laughs> operating a moving vehicle. What the hell, man? I mean, not only is he going and ch- chip, chopping lanes, not indicating, going above the speed limit, but he's having a go at himself while he's doing it. Yeah, well, I obviously couldn't reach the indicator because I was preoccupied. Well, it makes sense now, Keezy. Keezy, you got to grow up, man. Yeah. Thank you. Everybody uh, knows listen. that when you're doing that, you steer with your knees. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's good to know. Thanks, Mogi. Can I... Seriously, Keezy, I expected better from you, man. You're the driver, apparently. Can I just say, you love your Jace, cars, Jace, apparently. Can I just say, in terms of the roadwork speeding thing, I was going the same speed as everyone in front of me, 
Uh, which it was no admittedly defense. a bit no too defense. fast. No defense. Jace was holding up like 30 cars in traffic. By going the speed limit. Thank you, mate. Below the hey, speed Jace, limit. Hey, Jace, can I say, man? Kia car, That's brother. not the correct use of the word. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Depeche Mode there on the radio. Hodaki uh, Big Show this Monday afternoon. Now, of course, a bit of rugby league over the weekend. With that in mind, uh, we've got Charlie Gubb on the line. Now, Charlie, you mad bastard. How's life? Yeah, good. Good to be back on the airways, brothers. Good on you, mate. Uh, hell of a game that one on uh, Saturday. Were the Warriors lucky, Charlie? No, nah, they're not lucky. They're just they're just good. You know, they come out and um, they just went on. They took their licking from Manly, who were on. And I was just thinking to myself, well, back when I was playing, if we were down eighteen nil, at the end of the game, would probably. Um, you know, be down eighty nil, and <laughs> looking at a new coach. But they um, they're just a different team. Just expect them to win every game, and they've come back and they dug deep. And Manly kind of shut the bed, but that's that's footy. That's right. You got to put yourself in a position there. And I was thinking the same thing. It's like normally this will be all over, but I'm actually going to keep on watching it. And incredibly, to get that amount of points in the end to draw it um, was a hell of a result. You take the one point out of that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, after 20 minutes, if, if they said we were drawing, you'd be happy. But they um, they just dug deep. Dallin got the intercept. Um, Jazz brought a bit of impact from the bench. Tohu was a machine. It was just one of those things that, um, I don't know, uncharacteristic start from, from the new Warriors. But, geez, they're, they're a different beast now. Hey, Charlie, Keezy here, mate. G'day. Um, how are you? Yeah, good, good. I was um, I was having a little chuckle about you pleasuring yourself in the car. Oh, yeah. me, <laughs> oh, you heard that, did yeah. you? Oh, you're cool, cool. <laughs> um, Charlie, quick question, mate. You know, you mentioned Jazz, who scucky little short ball from Tohu Harris scored under the sticks, got us started, you know, and that's what he does. He is now out with quite a bad hamstring injury. Dylan Walker is out. Freddie Lussick is banned for a wee while. Marata Niukori is injured. We've uh, Bunty R four is out. We've gone from having this embarrassment of riches in the forward department to uh, like I'm quite interested to see what's going on with the bench uh, come tomorrow night. Are you worried at all about our depth? Nah, I'm not worried. Who have we got? We got the Dragons. So we've oh, got yeah, they suck. We got a week up our sleeves, but it just seems like um, everyone in that team kind of knows their role there. They're not trying to do too much, and the senior players are, are taking charge. So it's probably probably an easy puzzle of, uh, to fit a piece into. But come the back end of the year, we need our uh, marquee players on the field. Yeah. Uh, what do you? How do you reckon Jackson Ford was feeling after twenty minutes? Jackson Ford was he playing? <laughs> yeah, he played, but he dropped the ball quite a few times. I think That's he what... dropped it twice there, and uh, yeah, he sort of had a he had a bad run of it, and then he came good, and he got he gets heaps of meters. I'm, by no means saying that he shouldn't be in the team. He's bloody, he's he's a hardcore son of a bee. But those drop balls on attack, man, God, they eat me up. Yeah, no, they eat you up. I can tell by the way you're talking about him, you know, you kind of give him that backhanded compliment. But <laughs> it's, um, it's all good. But I think Jackson's, uh, Jackson's cemented that spot. He's the man. He's the man. He is. And, um, yeah, it is what it is. There was an interesting stat, actually. Correct me if I'm wrong, fellas, yeah, if you, you want. I can, I, I can bring you the stats, read the uh, league. The, the Manly versus the Warriors at home. Uh, they've won 11 from 17. Who has? Manly. Oh. Uh, at, with the Warriors at home. Oh, at yeah. our home. At our home, yeah. I found that quite surprising. Oh. Yeah. Did you find that surprising, Charlie Gubb? Can you ask answer me <laughs> you, can <laughs> you answer me this question though, <laughs> fellas? Because I didn't I didn't really understand it. You know, with that penalty at the end when Johnson went for the golden point thing. Oh, and he dropped it. Dropped, he dropped it. Dropped, they smacked into his leg. Yeah. Okay, I get that was a penalty, but why did they take it so far up closer to the post? Because that's where the ball landed. Oh, okay. Yeah. I would have thought it would happen where the offence happened. What do you What do you think about that, Charlie? Though, because you know, obviously, there's the defending side, jo- Josh Aloyo, who you know went for the charge down. You're trying to save a, a loss there, basically. Um, did contact the leg, and I know that Freddie Lussick fractured a guy's leg last week doing the same thing. Wasted him. How do you feel about that whole contacting the leg thing? Because it's a super fine line with the kickers now. That used to be your signature move, didn't it, Charlie? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It did actually. I'll try and find some old footage, but I think it's. Um, I think it has to be black and white. Like, if you make contact with their leg, you can't leave it up to interpretation, you know, because um, 
these refs, you just you just can't. It's like leaving it in the hands of the UFC judges. That's what the fighters are talking about. Yeah, yeah. Look, I, I I don't know about that, man. I reckon this, this is why I struggle with what my leg is soft. Oh, don't touch the legs. Oh, oh, penalty, <laughs> sir! He touched my leg. Come on, man. Harden up. Get some backbone, rugby league. <laughs> Uh, hey, Charlie, quickly, mate, do you want to do the uh, Porter King Player of the Week? Yeah, yeah, so the Porter King Player of the Week, we're going to uh, the hardest worker on the field, Tohu Harris. Yeah, yeah, 54 legend. tackles, 150 metres, can't do much more than that. Back Hell run. yeah, nice little uh, try assist too to Jazz Tevanga there. And don't forget, if you're in the Wellington area, you need a portal who hit up Porter King. Yeah, so good, man. Thanks, Charlie, your backbone. Just before we go, before we go, Keezy, uh, Yummy Boy of the Week. All oh, right, we're doing Yummy Boy. Keezy's Yummy Boy of the Week. Yummy. Yummy Boy of the Week is Dallin Watini Zelizniak because he's hot. Oh, yeah. But also because he got that intercept right before halftime, which is a real morale booster for the Was. Yeah, good Up stuff. Hey, Charlie, thanks for your time, mate. Have a great day. You too. Cheers. Thanks, miss mate. You. Thanks, mate. Yeah, miss you. The Hodaki Big Show, weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Here they come. Try time. Holy cow, the Warriors. Oh, yeah. Up the Warriors, baby. It's the Big Show in Brizzy for the NRL Magic Round. Feels like magic. Feels like magic. Is there anyone out there? Let's go to the phones. G'day, Josh. How's life, mate? Doing well, mate. Yourself? Yeah, good. Thanks, man. Good. Uh, what do you do for a crust? Oh, I'm plumber, mate. Oh, you're back, mate. No, you're back, mate. Yeah, That's your back, mate. Everybody knows. Uh, yeah. Did you watch the Buckle League on the weekend? Oh, mate. Always. Every week. Good on you, mate. Hey, Josh, if you won the prize, who would you take with you? Oh, I'd have to be the old man. So. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, Jason's yeah, nice. already going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I tell you what, Josh, you're in the jaw. Stay on the line, and our good mate Puxan in uh, Studio B will look after you. No worries. G'day, Estelle. How's life? Oh, good, thank you. Yeah, that's good. What do you do for a crust? Um, I, for a crust, I said for work. Yeah, for yeah, work, yeah, for work. Yeah, yeah. I work at a medical centre. Oh, okay. Oh, back 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 James, back can I ask a question? Yeah, sure, man. Did you watch the Buckber League at the weekend, Estelle? No, but my husband is. I'm calling on his behalf. Oh, good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, that's nice. So I'm picking Estelle. If you if you won the prize, you'd be taking your hubby. Yeah, definitely. Great stuff. Will you stay on the line too? And Pakistan and Studio B will look after you. No worries oh. at all. Thanks, mate. Oh. Sam, you mad bastard. How's life? Yeah, good boys. Good. Yeah, boy. Good on you. What did you think of the game in the weekend, Sam? Oh, she was she was a tough watch, but we we were lucky to get away with the draw there. I reckon. Yeah, we yeah, yeah. Were, we did, yeah. Well, that's what I said. Yeah, that's what I was. What Charlie Gubb and you guys went nah. No, you you called league soft is what you did. Yeah, in the end, uh, Sam, what do you do for a crust? Oh, I'm a surveyor, mate. Oh, oh yeah, backbone, yeah, backbone, backbone, massive yeah. backbone. Yeah. Who would you take with you, Sam? Oh, I'd let one of the boys. I think I maybe have a bit of a cage fight. Let the boys fight it out. Yeah, that's oh, spirit, man. Man. yeah, I like it, Sam. Yeah, like yeah. It. good fellas in the yeah. ring. Yeah. Mo- yeah, Mogi would be into that. You'd go along and watch the I'll cage fight, man. I'll throw a couple of dudes, man. You, you're already going. Yeah. But I can still punch people. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, Sam. You backbone. Stay on the line and puck time. Uh, and Studio B will look after you, no worries at all. Hey, uh, just a quick shout to those people that don't want to miss out and don't want to risk just getting in the competition. 2800 bucks is all it costs to actually join us on this trip. Go to boystrip.co.nz. The other ones that made it all possible. And for that cash, uh, you get flights, you get accommodation, you get silver match tickets to Magic Round, which is completely sold out. Everything is taken care of. And I've heard, just as an extra bonus to that, fellas, yeah. extra what? Um, bonus to all of oh, that yeah. great stuff. Keezy is going to take all of those people that sign up out for din-dins and a few beersies one is. of the nights, which is bloody generous of you, Keezy. Yeah. What a backbone. Yeah, you are such yeah, a backbone, Yeah, that's Keezy. part of it. Hey, hey Keezy, hey, you hey. promised, and this is another thing that he has promised us, is that when we get to the, um, the game and the Warriors are playing, he is going to, when he's massively steamed, he's going to turn around and face the rest of the crowd there at Lang Park there, mm-hmm. and he's going to do a hucker. Before the game and at half time. Beautiful. I tell you what. Hey, do you like the, do you if, know the word spine tingling? Hey, listen, just on that, if you're going to take people out in the town and shout them dinner and stuff, you might want to put a little dollop of money in your front account. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs>
<laughs> Here's Mumford and Sons. Uh, the Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Yes, indeed. The cult there on the radio, Hodaki Big Show, this Monday afternoon. The time is four minutes to six o'clock now. We're going to do a new thing here. Every Monday, it's going to be What's for Tea with me. Easy. But it's only going to be on Mondays. That's right. Every Monday, we want to know what you're having for dinner. What are you doing to start the week? Yeah. Uh, text us through on 3483. Tell us your meal, who you are as well, and you're in the draw to win. Uh, we've got a fat stack of night and day $50 vouchers, so it's worth doing. 3483. The bosses here at um, Hodaki said we had to get rid of it because it was a garbage segment, yes. and Keezy has been dropping a lip for the last month. Oh, that right? is not true. So we've said, look, Let's bring it back. You can have it one day a week, and if people respond to it and sort of get in behind it, then we might keep it. But otherwise, you know, the bosses, they know what they're talking about, man. They know a garbage segment when they hear one. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, look, the it, people love it. So I'll, I'll be honest. He what? was being a bit of a sookie bubba, wasn't he? Was, he? was he? The, yeah. the old quivering oh, bottom lip. You get yeah, in on this as well, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> don't forget, if you'd like a $50 night and day voucher, text through your dinner right now, 3483. We'll get into that after six. Also, of course, what's on the TV with Mike? The name. A quality, quality That's segment. garbage as well. <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Catch them weekdays from four on Radio Hodaki. Welcome back, you massive backbones. Hope you're getting through your Monday all right. You're listening to The Big Show, brought to you by night and day. Um, now, on the podcast outro uh, today, people might be going, what the hell is a podcast outro? It's not the highlight package that we do, which is a podcast as well, of, of the actual radio yeah. show. Yeah. It's not the radio show at all. It's outside the boundaries of the radio show. So, therefore, sometimes it gets a bit, you know, it can get a bit freaky. I don't think we should tell people what it is. Do you know yeah, what I mean? just go and check it hey, out. Hey, look, we've got a podcast. If you want to listen to it, you can. Uh, it's available wherever you find the best podcasts in the world. And uh, here's an example. Yeah, just quickly, this is um, us trying to figure out how many calories you burn while doing the nasty. <laughs> 563 calories in a Big Mac. A partner line flat on their back burn. <laughs> okay. Surely burns nothing. Uh, we'll burn 122 calories. If you want to ramp up the difficulty, could get it up to 172. Wow, that's not even, that's like a, a quarter of a Big Mac. Yeah, um, and that's how we should be measuring it as in Big Macs. And then at the end of it, you get that amount of Big Mac, you know what I mean? Good eating. Yeah, it was good eating, actually. I love that. I, I love that sort of chat. It was interesting. Yeah. You look like you were getting a bit, you know, fired up about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Randy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was getting Randy Mogi. <laughs> really? Well, that's just us three sitting in the studio here. You're getting randy. Well, because there's been a bit of chat today, hasn't there? We've been talking about um, the best sex positions in the podcast there to burn the maximum amount of calories. Yeah. Then also, um, Hoity J was talking about his, um, his fireplace is getting taken out of the corner of his house, so he's going right. to have room for his sex, sex swing. Yeah. Um, there's been all sorts of filth going around today. But healthy. Sex is healthy. Everybody is doing it. Yeah, nothing wrong with it. You know what I mean? And me being <laughs> randy is just a natural... Just a... <laughs> A natural reaction well, to what I was is. listening to. Keezy, no, I is. want to be clear here. There's nothing wrong with Jace getting Randy, all right? And if yeah, you yeah. No, no, if, no, no, no. Hang on. If you feel weird about that, then there's something wrong with you. Right. I yeah. just feel that Jace getting aroused whilst in an environment with us. I wasn't aroused, Keezy. I was Randy. Which, <laughs> yeah, that's different. That's even worse. I just feel like that made me uncomfortable. I'm not trying to yuck his yum. Are pardon? you trying to yum his yum? No, I'm not. I'm Sounds tr- like you're trying to yum all over his yum. No, <laughs> let me put your mind at. I wasn't yumming his yum, Mogi. Keezy, let me put your mind at rest here. I wasn't Randy visualizing anything about you. All right. Okay, cool, man. Thank you. Yeah, that. Let's just say my vision was elsewhere. Over these ways, Keezy. God, eyes to the front, Hoodie the, uh, That stallion in that dire wolf t shirt. <laughs> <laughs> The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. BB King and you too there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Monday evening. The time is 6.14, which means it's time for... Oh, yeah. Hey, guys. Text here from Steve. <laughs> What's for tea, tea, New Zealand? Zealand? With me, Keezy. Here he is. Here he is, old Keezy with his own segment. Oh, look, Let's he's go. got a little smile no, on his face. He's chuffed, isn't he? He's to have it back. He's so hey. excited. I think he's Randy now. G'day, fellas. 
Uh, every Monday after six, what's for tea in New Zealand? Your chance to win some fifty dollar night in day vouchers just by sending through what is on your dinner plate. Mm. Let's start here. G'day, fellas. Slow cooked corned beef, mashed spuds, greens, and mustard sauce. That's from Bonnie. Smiley face. Yeah, nah. I like it. I like that. Nah. I love it. You got to cook your corned beef fast. She done it slow. Yeah, slow. That's nah, first mistake. The only way to trap the moisture in there is you got to cook it fast. Oh, it just seems like the opposite of that. No, no, no. Oh, okay. I'll, I'll be honest with you. I prefer my um, corned beef blue. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's just, good eating. Just sear the sides. Bit, yeah, 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 yeah. Just about 40 seconds in the microwave. Yeah. Done. Beautiful. G'day, backbones. Calvin here from Taranaki. Calvin Harris. Calvin Harris here from Taranaki. Whoa. Calvin and Hobbs. <laughs> G'day, backbones. Calvin and Hobbs here from Taranaki. Where Calvin Klein. G'day, Backbones. Kelvin Klein here. I'm currently in Taranaki. Kevin Klein. <laughs> G'day, Backbones. Kevin Klein here. I'm I thought you said his name was Kelvin. G'day, it's Kelvin here from Taranaki. Great segment. I love it as much as the nice sausages I am enjoying. Really nice sausages. Sausages are nice. I'll give them that. I yeah. love sausages. Yeah, sausages. Bit of white bread there, Moogie. Bit yeah, of mustard. Or, yeah. Bit of yeah. sauce. Bit of lemon zest, a little bit of cracked pepper. Yeah, leather. yeah, for sure. Bit of onions? No. Oh, God. Who eats onions with sausages, Keithy? Sorry, I just thought that was a thing. A weird combo. G'day, fiellas. Rob here. I'm on the inter island of Rob Fier- Lowe. G'day, fiellas. Rob Lowe here. I'm currently on holiday in New Zealand and currently on Robert the- Redford. G'day, fiellas. Robert Redford here. I'm on the inter island of Ferry tonight. You'd think he'd be on a helicopter. That's unreal. Yeah, it's crazy. I'm on the Inter Island of Ferry tonight. <laughs> gotta, gotta get the margarita pizza with a side of hot chippies. Oh, that sounds great. That's not good enough for Robert Redford. Do they do that, uh, Mogi? I didn't know they did a margarita pizza on the way to Wild. Oh, they yeah, also, you know what? They also do, man, a meat lovers. It's Inter Islander, so that's down south. Oh, right, the okay. The one Picton. Yeah, okay, I got you. Depicton. Get a big show. My 20 year old son is making us some kind of chicken noodle and cabbage concoction for dinner. Purr. Good eating. Oh, God, I hate nah. cabbage. Good eating, I hope. Who's that from? That's from. <laughs> Phil? That's from Phil. <laughs> G'day, fellas. Doing some homemade pork meatballs with spaghetti and a sprinkle of parmy. Keep up the great segment, team. Oh, cool. Who's Who that, that from? That's from Brad. Oh, Brad Pitt. G'day, fellas. Brad Pitt here. Doing some homemade pork meatballs. Bradley Cooper. Oh, my God. G'day, fellas. Bradley Cooper here from such films as The Hangover. Just doing some homemade pork meatballs with spaghetti and a sprinkle of parmy. Keep up the great segment, team. Cheers. That's from Bradley Cooper. He loves his meatballs. Oh, so Especially good. Especially pork. Made of pork as well. Yeah, Big yeah. pork sicko. All right, one more, all right? Okay, last one. G'day, guys. Dean here. Oh, really? Dean O'Gorman, the New Zealand actor from The Hobbit. Yes. What was what was um, what Dean was, Kane, the guy who played Superman in the TV show? Who Lois was the guy Clark. that played Mac- MacGyver? Dean uh, uh, Dean Anderson. Dean Anderson. Is it him? Uh, it says here, Dean's nuts. No. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. <laughs> uh, anyway, he's not having, Dean Lonigan. It's oh. Dean Lonigan. Yeah, oh, yeah. G'day guys, Dean Lonigan here. Leek and potato soup with cheesy garlic bread, the way me grandma taught me. Yum. I think we'll bang this segment Actually. on the head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the Hodaki Big Show. Weekdays at four on Radio Hodaki. Gorillas there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this uh, Monday evening. Now we've had a lot of time to watch a bit of TV over the weekend, so let's get into a bit of TV chat. What's on the telly with Mike Minogue? Yeah. yeah. Terrible. You're bad. It was all right. There was a good period in there. Was there? Just a rough ending. Hey, uh, I watched some more. I watched another episode of Ripley or more. I'm up to. I've watched three episodes. Yes. After two episodes, I, I something happens in episode three which makes it interesting. Yes. My problem with it, outside of the fact that it's in black and white, which is infuriating me, is and I love black and white normally, but just given the locations, I don't see what the advantage is of doing it. Sure. Although I looked it up and they said, oh, it was uh, inspired by the book, which of course is written in black and white, <laughs> if you can believe that. I'm not even joking. And the, my problem with it is they're all so boring. 
except for the main guy. Yes. But the other two have got zero personality whatsoever. They've got zero charisma. There is zero chemistry between any of the three leads. Ah. Uh. And I don't get why he would, why Ripley would want to be the guy that he wants to be, you know, the guy that he's jealous sure. of. Yeah. It makes no sense. There is zero chemistry in, in that show up to this point. Do you know what shows like that? Zero. The big show. It is like that. You're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I think you guys, you know, got a little bit of chemistry. We've got a little bit of uh, je ne sais quoi. quoi. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I wa- Certainly so black you, and How white. do you feel about that comment? Yeah, no, I, I see where you're coming from. Yeah, I don't. The guy that plays the other guy yes. has got nothing, man. Yeah, well, that I tell you. That dude has got nothing. I tell you, you don't need to worry about that too much. But. I will also say that uh, maybe that's the point. That's the whole point, right? Yes. Like they're all very vacuous. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Um, I watched a movie last night, a thriller called The Nest, with Jude Law and Kerry Coon. I've seen that. Yeah. Interesting. It was, it's basically about this couple. Uh, the husband's a real sort of businessman, jet setter kind of. Like Keezy. Like, like Keezy. He, yeah, he yeah. wants to be. They're in America. Um, and then he goes back to London because he has this business opportunity. His wife is not convinced. They've moved four times in 10, ten years. Yeah. Uh, he, he's one of those guys that promises big but delivers That's very little. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, it's ba- and he's got a daughter and a son who he loves very much. It's basically a movie about the disintegration of a family. Yeah, right. Um, and... You know, a relatively interesting, relatively good performances, but ultimately I'll give it unfulfilling a... Unfulfilling. Uh, unfulfilling, a and, 6 out of 10. Yeah. Right. I think you're being generous. I 5. watched 5. it and I was like, God, this sucks. And what's yeah. that on? I watched, I watched the whole thing. I think it was Netflix, wasn't it? Yes, Nettie. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, Jace. You're Thanks, getting through mate. them, brother. Uh, I watched the final of the four episodes of Mr. Bates Hey, I'll just the post. stop you there, Keezy. Jace, do you recommend people watch that movie or not? Sure. You do? Yes. From me, I don't recommend you watch that movie. Yeah. Keezy. Probably out of time now, to be honest. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast. Green day there on the radio. Hodaki Big Show this Monday evening. Now, uh, we were having a little talk about the, the second to last slot of the show, weren't we, fellas? Yeah. And, and what we want to do um, from here on is, is call it the improv spot. Uh, basically where we get people texting in throughout the show suggesting topics for us to impro on. I don't know if you guys have done impro, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Doesn't it's, sound it, like fun. It's pretty, It's you know, it's pretty <laughs> risky. It's pretty, you know, you get, oh, I don't know what's going to come out. I've got a question. Mm. Do, do you think people will think that we're just using the improv spot as a way to just sort of not really prep for anything and then say it's improv? That's what I worry about. Oh, I'm not really worried about how other people feel about it. You're right. just worried yeah. about how you feel about I it. Think, well, I think what we want to do is we want to be offering something different, a counterpoint to what the other radio shows are doing. Yes. Right. And is anybody else out there asking their audiences uh, to supply content uh, yeah. so that they what? don't actually have to do any um, sort of prep? Well, it's wow. just it's just one of those things, Mogi, where we are so prepped for every voice break Thank in the show that I feel some. I, sometimes, I don't know how you guys feel about this, get the urge to just break free a little bit. I want to break free. Uh, and to just go out on the ledge and to look down at Thank the precipice you. below and just take a risk. Well, yes. I'm all for it, as long as our chemistry is good enough to carry through. You know, because the last thing I want is a break where we're sort of just flat. Like, this is my worry. We're just sort of floundering around, yeah. looking at the clock, going, "Is this long enough?" Well, that might happen, Keezy, but that's part of the risk, right? Uh, exactly. And when you're doing daring radio, um, you know, and some would say the best, you know, the best radio in the land. Yes, I mean, not the people that judge the radio awards in this country, no. but other people. Yeah, um, then yeah, those are the risks you take, and hopefully, there's reward at the other end. Yeah. yeah, okay. Look, I'll be honest with you; I feel more comfortable scripting out everything I'm going to say every show. Yeah, uh, as you I write know, a lot of his jokes. I've you got, do. I've got screeds of notes here, so the idea of doing an improv section freaks the living bejeez out of me. Eyes to the front, Keezy, if you don't mind. Right. Um, so, what do we say? Oh, I think it's worth giving it a go. Yeah, yeah sure, maybe. Okay. So tomorrow night we'll, we'll kick it we'll off. We'll start it. Oh, we're not doing it now? No, no, no. No, uh, we, we haven't asked for any suggestions. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, here's some ads then. The Hodaki Big Show Podcast.
Well, there you go, you mad bastards. We got through the Monday. Thank God for that. Mogi, what's the plan tonight, mate? Um, I don't know, man. I'll probably go home and uh, I've got to put a retaining wall in up the back. Yep. Oh, wow. So I've got to um, do that. So I'll probably do that to probably 2, 3 in the morning, something like that. Um, then I've got a sort of – we've got power lines that go above the head, so I've got uh, above the roof at our joint. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to bury those. Um, so I've got to dig up the concrete path that goes down the side of the house. Um, put those all into you're some. Allowed um, eh? You're allowed to do that. Hey, you're allowed to do that. Well, they don't. They don't work. See, they only work from nine till five. The council. Yeah, but if yeah. I'm doing it sort of three, four o'clock in the morning, oh. mate, they're asleep. That's yeah, the trick. True. I've yeah, got yeah, a yeah. Uh, jackhammer if you need it. Oh, sick! Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Just let me no, know, you can mate. Bring it over. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm, obviously, I'm going to be doing some concreting tonight uh, as well. I've got to clear some stuff around the house, but maybe later on the week. Yeah, oh, yeah, that'll be all me. yours, mate. Okay, then I'll pop. Well, I won't do that tonight then. Um, yeah, I've got to knock the shit over as well. So I'll probably knock the shit over instead. Oh, wow. Yeah, what? sweet as. Yeah, yeah. Full on. Look, if you need a sledgehammer for that, I've got a sledgehammer. I've got um, five sledgehammers. Oh, you've got, yeah, 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 yeah. okay. you got five of them. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Keezy, what are you up to tonight, mate? Just recovering from the weekend? To be honest, there's going to be a lot of recovery, but not. I've got to get my. Oh, uh, yeah, because you got pissed up last night. <laughs> I, I had a mate over from Canada who I see once every couple of years, and we did have a massive one. Yeah. And I forgot that I had th- three podcasts today, a radio show, and filming all morning. I realised at like 10 as I crawled into bed. Is that why you're in a hoor of a mood this morning? I'm in a great mood. Um, so I've got to do my gaming podcast, and then I'll be going home having a lamb kebab, which is what we're having for dinner, and then uh, go is to bed. Is it a kebab or a kebab? I think this one's a kebab. Really, what he means by that is it's just a bit of pork mince with egg and some crumbs. Yeah, uh, that's what I mean. And they cook it, yeah. And I call that a a lamb kebab. Yeah, yeah. What do you do? Actually, we don't have time, Jace, to be honest. Well, it's okay, Keezy. I'll just probably do my normal, go home and uh, give my wife a kiss and uh, get my gym stuff on. Uh, I think I'll probably eat before. Hey, thanks for listening to The Big Show, everyone. We appreciate it. We'll be back tomorrow from 4 p.m. And then... uh, Come back and watch another bit of Ripley or something like that and make love.